Well, hello there. He's standing young. I'm Pamela Ho, and you're tuned to the living room on 938 Live. Well, Ballet Under the Stars is back for its 15th edition. And if you're a fan of this outdoor event, then stay tuned because we'll be chatting with the Artistic Director of the Singapore Dance Theatre, or SDT, in just a bit to find out more about this year's programme. As far as we know, it's going to be a delightful mix of classical and contemporary dance pieces set to rousing music. And it's a guaranteed crowd pleaser, whether you're a ballet lover or a newbie. Yeah, 938 Live is proud to be an official radio station for this event. In fact, uh, looking at the event, there will be a pre-show program this 2009 season with local schools being roped in and we'll be seeing students from primary school to tertiary level entertaining the picnic crowd at Fort Canning Green uh, this coming weekend all happening there at Fort Canning what are some of the unique highlights and time now to find out from Yannick Shergan who is assistant or artistic director should I say of the Singapore Dance Theatre now Yannick hails from Sweden and has danced with many ballet companies throughout Europe and the US before taking on the role of ballet master and teacher with a Washington Ballet that was back in 1981 where incidentally Singapore's own Go Chu San was the resident choreographer. The Royal Swedish Ballet in 1984 he was with as well and the Pittsburgh Ballet Theatre in 1991 as well as the Norwegian National Ballet in 2002. That's right, and since SDT was established back in 1988, Yannick has staged 13 works, including pieces originally choreographed by the late Go Chu San for the company's repertoire. Now, on top of being artistic director, Yannick is choreographer for a new exciting dance piece at this installment of uh, Ballet Under the Stars called Pop, which is set to music by Annie Lennox, Tom Jones, and other contemporary artists. Now, what is that all about, and uh, what else can we expect from him and his team this year? Well, we find out now. Well, Yannick, you're a very warm welcome to the living room. Thank you very much. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Well, this is the 15th edition of uh, our Belly Under the Stars. Now, how will this year's um, program, this year's concept, be different from previous years? Well, the thing that's very interesting is the fact that Belly Under the Stars actually started the whole idea of Fort Canning Green being a performance venue. Prior to Belly Under the Stars happening 15 years ago, uh, it wasn't used the way it is for Womad and all the rock concerts and even Shakespeare in the park and the kinds of things that it's become known for. But Bowie Under the Stars started the whole idea and uh, after 15 years uh, it has matured <laughs> <laughs> along with the rest of us. And this year we're doing something very, very different because uh, um, I wanted to give something for everybody rather than just people who want to see what they think of as ballet. So we've got a little bit of everything and we're ending it with, uh, you put a good, you put a program together like a good meal. You have uh, an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert. But this time what we're going to have is five dishes. So, uh, we're ha and we have a big, huge dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I wonder what that could be. I know, I, I'm wondering too. Are you going to give us a hint? Well, I mean, pop, I mean, most people have been very, very interested in pop because it's something uh, that we've never done before. It's brand new for the company and it's territory that we really touched on only once prior where we're doing something extremely populist, where we've got songs from, uh, it starts and ends with Annie Lennox. And it's not that I'm so fond of Annie Lennox, it's just that she's really, really, really good. And she had just the right songs. Uh, it starts with this very sort of uh, um, kitschy song called Keep Young and Beautiful that she sings tongue-in-cheek about how women are supposed to always be. It's an old, old, old uh, like 1930s song that she sings with a, with a, a little uh, laugh in her voice, essentially. Mm. And it goes all the way through to uh, Walking on Broken Glass, which um, actually I put in right at the end. I changed the song. I, I was going to use another group and then I, I changed and put in Walking on Broken Glass because I thought it would be wonderful to bookend the, the, the performance with Annie Lennox. Mm -hmm. And we use um, very fun songs because the idea was is that to, to use some songs that the moment someone would hear them they'd go, oh I know that one, I love that one. <laughs> 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 so that's why we've chosen some of the pieces that and blended them so one piece goes into the other one and so that it's not too saccharine or too, we've got a, a blend of things. There's a piece that's a little quieter, there's a piece with Kodo drummers that's big and loud and, and forceful and mm. so. And the whole company is in it so absolutely every single person in the company is on stage at one point or another. Yeah. Pop by SDT. I mean, it, it definitely goes uh, against conventions. You often <laughs> think of, you know, ballet and classical music, but ballet and pop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, I mean, what was uh, challenging for you in putting together that 20-minute that performance? Well, 
for one thing, putting together the pieces that where one would flow into the next one, so that it wasn't, uh, so that you didn't keep banging away at the same note, and so that you have something that uh, uh, there's something for there's a section for the men, there's cer certainly a section for the women, there's a a, a very quiet uh, reflective section, um, and then there's uh, uh, we j I turned um, walking a broken glass into a tango essentially, mm -hmm. so it's all l Latin dance at the end. So so uh, uh, and they've been having so much fun doing it, and I've actually had a great great deal of fun rehearsing it. And uh, in truth, it came out of we did an event for Tiffany. Uh, several months ago that we did at uh, Ruffles. And I thought, well, you know, if we expanded this and sort of made it a little bit more uh, the whole company rather than a special event, then we could have something big. And so that's what we ended up with. Mm. How have the dancers uh, taken to this whole idea of going pop? Well, Everybody's a little shocked that this came out of me, because <laughs> I'm always the person who teaches them ballet class, and I'm the serious one, and I, you know, teach them Sleeping Beauty and Go Chusan's ballets, and I'm the one that it has to enforce the the discipline. And then here I am trying to get them to loosen up and be a little bit wild, and and uh, and I'm not a wild person at all, <laughs> truthfully, and and I have to get them to be wild. So that's the nice thing. But you know, we all had a past. <laughs> <laughs> so there was uh, the dark side to you. <laughs> to this. <laughs> right, and you mentioned Gochu Sun because we know also that uh, in part of the program there is a piece called Double Contrasts, which is actually original, originally choreographed by Gochu Sun himself. Now, I mean, how much, how closely are you sticking to um, Chu Sun's choreography or, or, you know, or are you giving yourself the liberty to kind of, you know, tweak no. it here and there? There are no liberties at all. I have to do this exactly the way Chu Sun wanted it. And actually, if I do my job well in staging Chu Sun's ballets, I disappear. That's what I keep telling everybody. I mean, all the